I'm Jeff Yi, and welcome to video number eight now in the Particles of the Universe video series. And this one will cover the element sequence, specifically the periodic table of elements. And earlier, I used this magnetic balls as an illustration of the atomic nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. I happen to run out of my Skittles, so I'm back to the magnetic balls. But the sequence is interesting. Protons and neutrons in combination might form a metal, or might form a gas, or an element that's completely different, but it's all based on a different configuration of protons and neutrons. So that's the question, why and how? How does it do that? And this one's going to be a lot of fun because you're going to see the, an interesting geometric pattern that started with subatomic elements and carries through now to atoms and it carries through to molecules. That's where we start. Two quick reminders before starting the video. The first is that all the information in this presentation is available in both the books and on the website in the URLs you see. And the second is I will cover blue slides in detail and red slides you can pause at any time to read, such as this one, which covers the wave constants and variables that will be used in the presentation. And now let's move on to the atomic element sequence. All right, and this is the, what led to eventually to the periodic table of elements is this unique sequence. And to explain this, again, if energy flows as waves, and if the tetrahedron is the stable geometric arrangement for particles that react to longitudinal spherical waves, then that same structure, the tetrahedron, can explain the sequence of atomic elements. But first, a refresh on the periodic table. And this one has been annotated. What you see there highlighted in red ovals is the completion of a tetrahedral row. And that is the same as the ending of a block. A six for the P series, D for the uh, 10 for the D series, and 15 for the F series. And this is also where you can see where the F series is inserted. Now it changes D back to nine, and that was discussed uh, in the previous video. But first, before we get into the uh, stacking, as it's called, the stacking of nucleons to become the atomic nucleus, uh, some rules. Nucleons are ranged from the center first that was discussed in the previous video. Um, it's really about uh, stability. Right? If it's out on the edge, it's not stable. A neutron may replace a proton. That was also discussed, um, you know, similar to the atomic mass increase uh, as it transitions uh, from the f orbital to the next d orbital. And what was also discussed was that the easiest proton uh, to fill uh, will fill first, and that is the same spin as the spin of the proton. It just takes less energy. Once those are filled, of course, then the ones with opposite fill uh, will be opposite spin will be filled. Uh, begins uh, building a linear structure, um, you know, planar. And then finally, a three-dimensional object beginning with the uh, first p orbital, and that'll be explained uh, when you can see the structure. Uh, next is that it will build a tetrahedron, uh, but then it has to be symmetrical. We're going to find that after uh, the first uh, completion of the two p orbital. Then, lastly, nucleons um, uh, require a certain separation between proton and neutron, and then also between proton to proton, and that's uh, discussed separately in a different slide. Here's a legend before we get into the details. Um, it's for simplicity, only protons are shown with the exception of when a neutron takes the place of a proton. And only the side view, uh, because it becomes very complex to be able to illustrate all these, so only the side view is displayed, but you can see the tetrahedral numbers there, 1, 3, 6, 10, and 15. So this is it, and this is a red slide, but pause long enough just to point out a few things. Um, this is an assumption you know, of how the protons might be arranging, but it does make a lot of sense. These are the ending um, of each of the blocks, and each of these is the corresponding um, completion of a tetrahedral row. 
The exception you see there in blue is argon. Uh, argon has 18 protons, calcium has 20. So a blue, um, blue represents a neutron. And you'll see that argon has the same atomic mass count uh, essentially as calcium. And so there are the additional neutrons, and this is where they would be. The other thing that's important to note is look at um, the tetrahedral arrangements, but it eventually becomes symmetric. Now going beyond first d orbital, uh, this is the possible arrangements going all the way to the first f orbital. Again, everything has a tetrahedral sequence in here. But it is worth noting this is possible arrangements as I tried to work out the details of how each of the elements would look after it finished the um, orbital block. Now, I mentioned the separation rules earlier. Um, a proton and a neutron um, would be separated at uh, stable wavelength nodes. Again, that's a fundamental rule for all of this, and so uh, it has been estimated uh, how far apart they would be and what that force would be using the force equation for the strong force. Protons also require separation as well. And this is where the neutron would separate the protons, and this has also been uh, calculated using that same equation. And here are the nucleon distances, or should they say best guess estimated for the proton to neutron distance. And there are different geometric arrangements, so two have been uh, put together here, and likewise for proton to proton distances for the different shapes. Now, why was this done? And one of the reasons is to understand the difference between fusion and fission. Right? Iron is the peak uh, that separates fusion from, from fission. And this red slide, so I won't go through the, the details, um, but it's important to recognize that iron would be the first time that in a fourth row the vertice uh, proton is uh, placed. And when you align all of the protons, uh, you can see here in the bottom right that there are more repelling forces now than attracting. So a possible explanation as to why iron now is that separation point. Let's summarize the element sequence, and this is actually summarizing everything so far in this theory, beginning with the fundamental wave center, again, possibly the neutrino. And I really hope that the tetrahedron is now your favorite geometric structure, uh, and it is the simplest 3D structure possible, because it's seen throughout this theory as wave centers combine the electron was found to be 10 wave centers. And again, the likely structure would be a tetrahedron. And that would be a three-level tetrahedron. Now, it was also proposed that electrons are quarks. And four electrons at the vertices of a tetrahedron with a positron in the middle, that would be a two-level tetrahedron. And again, if you missed the other videos, those electrons are not repelling. Uh, they take a very different form once they're placed together on standing wave nodes. And that explains why the positron in the middle has the positive charge for the proton. And it continues to build out. And we see, again, more evidence of the atomic nuclei structure being tetrahedron, as explained in completing the blocks for the D block, for the P block and the F block. But it, it's also observed in molecules today, linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral structures of molecules. And this can be observed. And so if you think about molecules, molecules are just inheriting the properties from atomic nuclei, which are, again, forming the same tetrahedron that protons, electrons are forming, all with the fundamental rule of minimizing wave amplitude in all directions and trying to be placed on the nodes of standing waves. Well, thank you for joining today. And that concludes the video on the atomic element sequence. And from particles to elements, hopefully you've seen that the same laws of physics apply and that everything is wave energy. 
And for the final video, number nine, we're going to summarize all of this and the simplicity of the universe. See you soon.